Hi, it's Morocco Omari. You're watching Cedric Live Show on UBC TV. It's the it's your host, Cedric Live in the capital. What is it about, uh, let me use his stage name, Bobby Wine, that really gets you going? Because, you know, I can see it, you know, to some extent, you even comment on, on this issue. Uh, what is it? Is there something about Michael Wokorak that nobody else knows, that you'd like to share with us? Is there anything that they don't know? Like, for example, you sleep with a teddy bear. <laughs> <laughs> These demagogues, because for them, they are so totally out of sync and tuned. So many young people have lost hope that they can even make it here in Uganda. Because we are not the same, remember? Not everyone is going to be a musician. It's very inspiring. It's about dreams dashed, hope crushed, and perseverance. Hi, my name is uh, Cedric Babu Ndilima. I'm the talk show host for the Cedric Live Show. Uh, we come to the end of our first season, 16 episodes. So just want to thank a few people and uh, for, for what has happened. It's been 16 episodes. It's been a learning experience. want to start off by thanking the management of UBC, led by the managing director, Mr. Winston Agaba. The rest of the executive, thank you very much for supporting the show, giving us the tools that we need, especially Sophie. Thank you very much, Sophie. I'd also like to thank the production team, the guys who work behind the scenes to make this happen, the camera guys, social media guys, uh, the research people, um, everybody involved, uh, the photography, everything that's, that, that's needed to bring the show together. Um, I'd also like to thank the sponsors, National Information Technology Authority and uh, Naguru Skies for giving us the venue. It's a beautiful venue. It's a great hotel, great views, uh, great service. So I hope that uh, we'll be back with them in season two. Um, above all else, I want to thank uh, the guests. Uh, and uh, for giving us uh, or honoring us with their presence at the show. We've had some great guests, you know, starting with our first guest, Genuine, to our last guests, Martha Kay and Godfrey Kutessa. There's been so many people in between. And uh, just thank you all very much for gracing us with, with your presence. It's, it's, we're really, really grateful for all the wonderful causes that have been shown on the show, uh, from uh, Isaac Bumbuli, uh, the footballer who lost his leg, to Tunaweza, um, uh, who are an institution that are working with autistic children, um, to the boy child with Godfrey Kutesa. Thank you all very much for, for, for being able to come on the show and, and tell us a few things that we didn't know. Um, the Cedric Live Show is really about um, informing, inspiring, educating, and basically sharing the peace. You know, uh, Uganda is a beautiful country. We're here to build Uganda. We're here to to make Uganda a better place. So whatever contributions that we can make in this entertainment space, this is what we're going to do. And this is what we're actually trying to do through the Cedric Live Show. Um, we have 16 episodes. Uh, they're all on our YouTube channel. So make sure you subscribe so you can watch all the 16 episodes and everything that's coming uh, in the next season. Uh, once again, thank you all very much. Wish you peace, love, and happiness. Take care. Live in the capital, it's your host Cedric Live in the capital, Cedric Live in the capital, it's your host. I'm here with Genuine, one of the greatest <laughs> R&B artists of, of the 90s, 2000s, still one of the legends of R&B. So tell me, what's your first impression of Uganda? I know you've traveled in Africa, yeah. you've done a lot of different stuff. Yesterday, uh, I had an opportunity to um, go to a club and uh, go through the city and it looked like New York. It looked like it, it was packed, man. I was like, what's going on here? I wasn't sure how to pronounce your first name. Elgin. Elgin. Yeah. yeah and then Elgin. your surname? Lumpkin. L-U-M-P-I-N. Lumpkin. Lumpkin like pumpkin, but with an L. Pumpkin, but with an L. Yeah. Does that, that work? <laughs> yes, that's that's the easiest way. But um. So how did it all begin, man? How did you get into music? What's your motivation? What's your inspiration? When I was a kid, I always danced and, and, and you know, I, I used to pop and break dance and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, we saw in your video. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, so that that started from an early, early age, and then um, during the time of, of of rap and all that kind of stuff, when that was coming up, uh, uh, break dancing and stuff like that had kind of faded. Yeah. So I needed something else to do. So we just started singing New Edition and Michael Jackson songs. So I was in a group named uh, Finesse Five. Yeah, and um. You know, I was like the little Michael of that group because they were 12th graders and I was like in the 
ninth grade. They kept telling me that I had something. I didn't, you know, I just liked to do it. I didn't know that I was going to do this until I saw Michael Jackson on Motown 25. Okay. So once I saw that, that's when, you know, the aha moment, the light bulb goes off in your head. That's what happened to me. I was like, I want to make people feel like he made me feel that night. You said you're a dad too. Yes, yes. I, I'm, I'm a dad nine times. So nine I, times. I have seven boys and two girls. I mean, seven girls and two boys. You're welcome to Uganda. Yes, yeah, thank you. We, we, uh, there's a lot of space, so if you ever need space, <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, definitely. You can bring them in. Yeah, I will bring them back with me if I come, yes. I, I only remember because I was young. In those jeans? Oh, but even though I got my own on CD, CD, even I yeah, might be on, on TV. All right, I'm on. Okay, have a blast. All right, do you have anything you wanna? Do you want? You have anything you wanna tell him? Jesus loves you. Jesus loves you. Thank you so much. It was nice meeting you. All right, thank you. Yo, I come to Uganda and Cass and Horace is using my lines to try to pick up girls. I was like, it is okay. So I, I, I had money on me. I was confident I had money. So I touched my pockets. I didn't have my wallet with me. I did not have any single coin in me. I did not have my phone. So my brain switched. I told the officer, arrest these guys that have taken my wallet and my phone. Right. Remember, none of my friends knew what was happening in my life. Yeah, they were still in the club. Yeah. Uh, so they started like checking them there. One of them got lost. So me my mind was on my phone and wallet so but then it was like a long time they were not seeing it then i, I asked for one of their fund is a phone to call home call my girlfriend to come with money and we pay and go then uh, one of the funders gave me a phone and told me there's 400 shillings be brief so i got a small phone moved aside to make a phone call as i was still dialing the number i had I had a sound like poof, you know, like poof, then a smoke, a white smoke when I was down. Because I had a sound, then I fell down. Then I saw like smoke, smoke like white smoke coming up. Then uh, I, I felt heat like in my, in my back because I was lying down. Then touching like this, it was blood all over and uh, it was too much heat in the blood. You know, blood is hot, blood is hot. So the guy shot me from a close range because I was, I was standing, and the guy shoot me from a side. He shoot this leg, then the bullet passed through here, entered here, and came out from here. Are you trying to tell me that you are Ginger Road Police Station? Inside. And a policeman shot you? Inside Ginger Road Police Station. You weren't armed, you didn't have anything, I you did just not. shot you? I was, not, I was not arrested. I did not make any statement with them. I, I was a free Ugandan. It was a traffic case that was supposed to be settled to a police station. There was nothing like a case. There's nothing like we had come to uh, 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 sign up a case or anything. No. So that is how I was shot. Okay, so you were shot. You fell to the floor. What happened after that? Yeah. yeah. Um, so when, when, when I fell down, I, I tried again to stand up and walk. But I felt like one side was paralyzed. So I went back down for the second time, and this guy kept coming with a gun. Yo, what's up? My name is Bebe Cool from Uganda, number one artist. Big up to our fans and friends. Remember Gaga had taken over. Right now you're watching the Cedric live show on UBC, so you stay tuned right here. That was oh. actually you were the first guy to ever pay me more than a million shillings ever in my life. Really? Ever. That gig I did. I was actually speechless because when we were doing the final meeting... If I had known about the salary <laughs> of MTN, I would have given you 250,000. But when, 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 unfortunately, I saw how much I was being paid when you had the list yes. of, of, of people you were service paying. Providers. Of service providers. And then you put it on disc. So when we were having the meeting, I just peeped. And then I saw my name and I saw the arm out. Hey! I started shaking. I was like, I have to make this gig work. I have to make sure I bring my A game and I brought my A to Z game. You brought that. your game. <laughs> and ever since you've been, we've been brothers. It's from that day that, that everything else has been smooth. They have supported me from day one. Actually, Rajiv thought I was Pablo. The first time I contacted him, 
So he bought a table not knowing who I was. Because we use those 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 Spanish names, Pablo, Salvador. So he was like, yeah, yeah. Buy two tables. So when he came for the show, he waited for Pablo. I'm sorry, brother. That guy and, uh, uh, was me times two. Seen such, and I, I had, I liked some thought about how to use such machines. So I was like, when I survive this, I will let the world come to know, so that people can learn. Instead, some people they do mess up because of ignorance. But surely, the, you know, like uh, uh, there must be people. Uh, who treat their house help maybe Salvador can jump in here who treat their house help well uh, sometimes offer education uh, offer them a better life uh, give them their freedom when they need to do what they have to do and treat, treat it like it's a job and let me tell you something by the time I finished watching that show I had sent my fiance a, a love poem <laughs> I was looking for my mother Wow. I was thinking of my kids. Great. And when I went to bed, I said a prayer. Wow. Right? That's what happened to me after your show. And this, this, is, this is not even a lie. Okay? And I said that, I just said, you know, yeah, this is the best thing I've watched on Ugandan television for a long time. I'm going to let you speak about it, but, you know, what was your inspiration? Uh, the, 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 the main story of Veronica and Michael, it's based on a true story. Is it? Yes, it is. That's you should say that at the beginning of the movie. Oh, I, oh, I do. That's no, not a don't. true story. Uh, it happened to someone I know. And the fact that we, our, our healthy facilities are not exactly the best with cancer right now. Yeah. So it kept on happening. And the, how she found out she, was in, she went to India to actually find out that she, was, she had leukemia. And it was at a late stage. Yeah. So that it inspired me in a way that it, it will not only happen to her. So many people are suffering. So many people don't even know that they are victims of cancer until the last stage. Yeah. So I was like, I'm an artist. We are like prophets in a way. What do we do for society at the end of the day? So I was like, you know what? This is something that can do a lot, that can change people's lives. So I sat down and I created Veronica. My mother hates what I do with her guts until the day she saw Veronica's wish. Did she see the sex scene? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, there was, I don't know if that's on TV. But, uh, you know, I'm just, everybody's going to see it anyways. Young, I was still in my senior too. And the way it started, it was all peer pressure. It was not like I had problems or depression or anything of that kind. It was just let me have fun. Yeah, it was let a bit wild when we were growing up. You know, yes. A lot yes. of just walking around, drinking local brew. And, exactly. You know, that sort of stuff, yeah. Exactly. So when I found out about that, I said, have to do something uh, about this underage drinking because people don't understand it. I have to do something as well about reckless use, if I may call it that. Hallelujah! Amen! Hallelujah! Amen! Today I came here with a good message. Jesus Christ loves you young women. Have you given your life to Jesus Christ? Huh? <laughs> Jesus Christ is the only way to heaven. John chapter that and that. God, only God is the, the way and the truth and everything. In Uganda, that every failure in a country is produced by government. And it is something so perverse in Africa that somehow governments have to do everything. I'm sure you've watched a documentary called The Men Who Built America. When you watch that documentary, 10 hours of the transformation of the American economy from a backward agrarian economy to a modern industrial economy, you don't see anything called government. You look at business people engaging with society. If the innovations, business people are willing to fund those innovations, not the government. I think that in Africa, we are living in a period where we are taught that the government does everything. In any case, government can only reflect the competencies, values, norms, habits, and mentalities of the people who make it up, who make up the society. The leaders of Uganda don't come from Sweden or Denmark or Ecuador. They come from Ugandan society. They reflect us. So I tell you, I was walking on Kampala, 
behind Watoto Church, there is a new shopping mall. Yes. So I go to that shopping mall and uh, there is a, a supermarket. It's, I think, the largest supermarket in Uganda. I ask who owns this shopping mall. They tell me a woman called Frida. I ask uh, who owns the supermarket. They say the same person. So I call her. I get her number. I call her. I go to see her. And, you know, she tells me she can't speak English. She's never been to school. She tells me she started a small kiosk in Chikubo and has grown from a kiosk to a supermarket, from a supermarket to a mega supermarket, to a shopping mall. She's a very wealthy person. You see, look at Sudir. He started as a taxi driver in London, came here with 25,000 pounds, and now he's a multi-billionaire in dollars. You see. So in other words, this country has opportunities for people to grow. Domestic Ugandans, whatever word you use, but they must be national. Because foreign companies, Museven is obsessed with foreign direct investment. I can promise you, you're ready. Foreign direct investment has never developed. In a country, it will not develop Uganda. Why is foreign direct investment... Repatriation of funds. Well, I'm going to show you this. Why is foreign direct investment an inappropriate vehicle for, for, for transformation? If Museven <clears throat> paid as much attention as he does on these other nonsensical things, on Kira, that car he talked about, yes. this country in the next 20 years will transform. Anyhow, the bottom line is this. I'm critical of, of, with him on that. Let me tell you. In spite of my criticism of him, when I compare him with Besige and the, this Bobby Wayne especially, I realize that this country is better off with Museveni than these demagogues because for them, they are so totally out of sync. Hi, this is Uyanda Mbuli from Uyanda. It's on, on SABC3 in South Africa. And you are watching the Cedric Live show on UBC. Stunning show. For show. <laughs> Peace. Yo, what's up? This your boy Genuine. Love you, Uganda. Thank y'all for tuning in on the Cedric Live show on UBC. Peace. Cedric Live in the capital. It's the capital. Show Cedric Live in the capital. It's the capital. Thank you. I've been it's looking for you for a long time. <laughs> I know. I'm Have finally been. here. Hey. Whoa. I'm trying to run. Someone held my shirt with my boxers, so they almost ripped off my shirt and put me naked. <laughs> so my bums were just out there in the air. You know, Hollywood is great. Yeah. You know, it, but I think in 2018, Forbes magazine named you as one of the ladies to watch. My guest today is one of Uganda's leading ladies. Live in the capital, it's your whole Cedric live in the capital. Yeah, come into you live, straight out the two five, six, the crew live, stay up on them new vibes. You so, know you've written a lot of songs for artists, and I think people speak about what you wrote for Bebe Cool. Yeah. Um, so, do you, what, what is, what is your, why would you write for another artist? It's business as usual. They, they, there's nothing like, oh, you know what, I shouldn't write for them. I should just do my own stuff and make sure other people are not really up there. I feel like we can all be up there and it can all work for us. This music is not for competition. That's how I feel. Like, I feel like music is, is supposed to be something real, that, an expression. And uh, we can all express ourselves. So you've written for um, some of the big names, like sure. Bebe Cool. Juliana. And, uh, Juliana. Bebe cool. Who else? Um, Rema, Lydia Jasmine, Cindy. You can relate with the message. Who else uh, that is really speaking? Late Mose. Mose Radio. That, that, one, that one is number one, if I'm to put up numbers. Rest in Radio. Peace. Rest in peace. That guy is special. Whatever he says is believable. You know, music can be sung and people listen and they're like, okay, that's a good song. Majority of Ugandan artists, 99%, their music is not believable. It's listenable, it's likable, but it's not believable. You cannot feel what they're saying. It's just they are talking or saying certain words. Kwagala, kwagala, they have a melody, but you can't feel the sincereness. I've seen you involved in some some things that are a bit sensitive. Um, I saw you walking or marching during the, I think it social was- Social media tax. Social media yeah. tax and OTT. Yeah. You marched on it. Um, I saw you in the, in the press. I've seen you also, but let's talk about that first, you know, just briefly. And then um, tell me why, what, what made you get up and, and oppose this particular, these particular taxes? Uh, basically, for social media tax is personal. Yes. I am a person who uses social media to market my music. Yes. To market my brand. Yes. To get more outreach. 
and um internet already in uganda is very expensive compared to the countries around us yes. this is a fact now we meet marvin banda so marvin banda i mean you're you're an innovator uh what what, what t- tell us about yourself what have you innovated i mean i'm, I'm reading about you developed something okay, maybe you tell us about it. i and my team we came up with a fertilizer and we call it project kaseke because it uses straws normally it is straws through which the test subject blows in order to be tested for the alcohol percentage. And the bottom line is to curb drunk environment, to control drunk environment. I've had this discussion, of course, with my own experiences. And I think that the biggest issue with uh, producing film uh, in Uganda is that the, the exit strategy is not clear. I don't know. I'm not sure at what point, like, the thing happened yes but i just know like the desire was i came across some footage some old footage like you know um of some the reporters who found the muse and yes. the nra soldiers in the bush during yes. the, in 1985 86 i think and just watching it was so um i don't know eye-opening you know to see yeah. the conditions they were living in to just to see it you know visually yes and then um, I was watching it, I think, with a few friends and, and, the, and they were younger than me and they were saying, you know, this is, seeing these things with their eyes, it, 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 so it affects, that's what affects, that's what uh, young people understand, visual, you know. Yeah. And then I thought, why, why, why don't we tell the story visually? I just started thinking about it, then I started asking around, you know. And uh, everyone was, oh no, that's just, it's such a big story, there's just no way you can compress it or tell it just like forget it basically yeah, yeah. so um but somehow the it's like god had like just planted a seed in my heart and the more people told me it's just not possible the more you wanted the to do more it. i was just driven to to tell the story that's called being rebellious you know that <laughs> i don't know <laughs> i don't know so i just started you know trying to write the story and um, ask and research and interview and and then somehow the script was done, and then we went from there. Did you write that script? You know, it won't be safe for them. So those are the ones who we bring into our home, and we love them, and we, we you know, I, we take care of them as well. They're um, stuff. Actually, yeah. I'm a very big. Um, I love anything to do with Africa, with Uganda. I like your jacket. Thank mm. you. So okay. yeah, so this is. Is it? Is um, it uh, it's African. What do you call it? Uh, unisex. Is yeah, that the word? It actually is. Yes. But it will have to measure it. <laughs> for you know. Are for, you saying for something? a man? <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> men, just... men don't have hips. And men don't have. Oh, you know, right, so right, right. Right. <laughs> I was, I was getting a bit offended. <laughs> there's, there's certain things you, you know that you put into consideration with men, which I'm discovering because now I've suddenly gone into the, the tailoring world. So our girls tailor. So we try to make really beautiful things. We don't want people to buy them just because all friends need them. But we want people to say, oh, this is a really nice thing. And then they say, oh, it was made by kids in Thailand. So this is one of them. So this is a reversible jacket. Um, Hanging inside if you want to walk around with Jesky Tenge. And then with the cotton on top. In Kenya, when I got there, I spent two weeks on the streets, sleeping on the street, because I didn't have money. And uh, I, I didn't know people. So during the day, I could sleep at the uh, entrance of a hotel. I had little money. I used to pay the gate man of the hotel to keep my bag and to allow me to sit with him throughout the night. And then during the day, I go hustle, look for studios. Because Ugandans were a bit ahead when it comes to aggressiveness yes. musically at the time. Right. So I went to the studio on Mombasa called Sync Studio. I talked to the owners. The owners just told me, show, show us what you can do. One of the biggest differences between music today and music then is that those days you heard the musician before you saw the musician. Yes. So you were not, you were not buying an image. Yes. You were buying the song. A, a policeman was drunk. Yes. And uh, I had policemen in uniform too. So working in a big group. And um, he's like, you guys stop, don't come here. So I, I tell this other policeman, go and talk to your fellow guy. That's, this is a road. Mm-hmm. Um, so this guy walks to him. As soon as they reached him, I think two steps before, the other guy just opened fire. He shot at you? He shot the police, the fellow policeman in the same uniform with an AK-47. He picks the AK-47 from the ground and then started shooting, you know, 
So he shot me like four times and then my bouncer. You got shot four times? Yeah. And then my bouncer, Cobra, jumped in front of me then because he, he was like, boss, Waputa, they're killing you. Because I couldn't even feel. Yeah, because of adrenaline. But I was yeah. in shock. Yeah. And then he stands in front of the AK-47 is shot six times. And, uh, I, but he pushed me away from the, from the mouth of the AK. So we managed to escape, run here and there, tagged on cars, went to Nsambia Hospital. Uh, lucky enough, it was about five people who had been shot, one policeman and four fast guys. And lucky enough, no one lost life. Later, but, but 92, when we're like, the, like our generation, yes, the, the shows in Sheraton, gosh, it was like Unbelievable. a big deal. So, here, all the kids dry, really dressed up, and it was the best hotel uh, in town. It was the only hotel, yeah, yeah. You know, so we did the ballroom, and perfect generation now came in, Steve Jean, and you know, Peter Sematimba later, yes. But then now, reggae started going uptown, that, guys. Remember, Shaka is the one that made Kanye come to Uganda. No. He had options. <laughs> Kanye had options. <laughs> yeah, uh, he but, did. Uh, Shaka it was the one who put the nail in the coffin, and Kanye was in Uganda. And of course, that whole social media thing that went on. So, you know, a lot of credit goes to Shaka for promoting Uganda from his journey in 1981 uh, all the way to his retirement a couple of weeks ago. Welcome to the show, John Kamlegere. He's been suffering with a condition um for his life for his whole life that also includes my sister as well and uh, that particular condition is hydrocephalus what is hydrocephalus uh thank you for having me here uh hydrocephalus in the simplest of terms eh, is water on the brain so basically you have a uh, water build up that that is not draining out of the brain because uh there is an obstruction somewhere so it's, if to put it in layman's term, it's like if you have a sink that is clogged up and there's no outlet for the water to pass. So you find the water overflowing and just like in the, in the head, uh, the water has nowhere else to pass. So you, 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 vi you can visibly see it. You, the head starts to expand, especially in children. It's mainly in infants. You find uh, some infants uh, some infants have it, hmm? although it can also happen in adulthood. But in adulthood, uh, the, it's presented in a different way. Your, your head doesn't really expand as such, but you have different, different symptoms. You can have difficulty walking, you can have blood vision, uh, balance, your balance is off a lot. Hmm? So that's basically what hydrocephalus is. Just the water on the brain. Alright. Ooh. I hate to see this pretty face wash up on the banks of the Hudson Mountain. Be there, alright? Omari, welcome to the Cedric Live Show. Hey, thank you. How do you teach people and make them believe that they can get to the promised land? <laughs> Oh, man, that was a good question, man. It's, it's one of those things I don't know how to answer that. And when they ask me about Hollywood, I'm like, you know, Hollywood is great. Yeah. You know, it, it, but it's a lot of hard work. When you see actors of color, uh, you know, African-American actors, know that we've worked three times as hard to get half as much or know that we have to be... Um, we have to be a, a politician as well, because I can't go in and be like, ah, I have to go in, how you doing? I have to disarm them, yeah. charm them, and then go into my bad guy or whatever character, so I won't scare you, you know, because you might believe that I really am a killer. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because <laughs> of the stereotypes. Because of the stereotypes, yes. you know, and, and they figure, oh, you're a big black man with deep voice, and uh, you might really have killed a few people. This is Andrew Mwenda, the old man of the clan, the man of broken hearts, and you are watching the Cedric Live Show on UBC Television. So we're still here with Omari Morocco, but also joined by Rita Aliguma, mm. uh, the proprietor of the Aliguma Foundation. 
and the first Ugandan and first female on the International Sports Press Association. Is that right? Yes, yes, that is actually very true, yeah. How does the Aliguma Foundation allow these people to exit out of this particular particular conundrum they're in? Well, how does it how do they allow, I mean, how does it work? Well, uh, at the beginning of it all, I actually did not even intend, you know, to just an NGO, an organization or something of sorts. It was just a simple birthday that I was celebrating with the community. Then later on, I realized actually as a journalist, I can actually use uh, my platforms to bring something to table for this for this community, the children and the mothers. Now, as we speak today, I'm happy to say we have actually been in the community for one, for close, okay, coming to two years, but um, currently we have a workshop for the women that we have actually opened up to empower these women that if I am not there tomorrow to give them a meal, they can actually depend on the skills that we have given to them. We are having, uh, they, they, we have a shoe project and a book project. Yes. So they have actually started producing. You can actually come and support us and buy maybe craft shoes from these women to support uh, this community, the community women in such a way. So I strongly believe as well, it is not important for these women to live on the handouts and just probably maybe to, to, to basically live on the daily meal that I can take there and of which I don't actually take the meal every single day. I'm here with Uyanda Mbuli yes. uh, from South Africa, yeah. one of uh, South Africa's leading on female entrepreneurs. Yeah. And uh, I would even say personalities uh, because you have your own uh, talk show. Um, you're a businesswoman in your own right. Uh, I think in 2018, Forbes magazine named you as one of the ladies to watch. Uh, top five ladies. Was it just ladies or just generally? It was generally business people in business to watch, yeah. As the fake news and the negative press got worse and worse week after week, all I could remember was that girl that grew up in a dusty township with a dream of walking the global stages. Being here in Dubai, in Chumaira Beach, I'm finally realizing that that dream that I've always had of moving from city to city and turning myself into a global citizen is finally here. Those naysayers encouraged me. They made me uncomfortable in my own country. And it got to a point where I realized if this dream is so powerful and is forcing me from within, then I can live it anywhere in the world. What are you up to? How's everything going? Babe, I'm coming to New York. No way. What Look, is it I about want, Uganda that wants you to come back? I haven't seen the whole, whole Uganda, but I want to get a place in Uganda. Really, I love Really? It. Yeah, like I a place, to, like a home? I want a home in Uganda. I love but Uganda. But now that you're a successful woman, I mean, you see all these houses here that you can buy some of them. They're just, you know, beautiful houses, you know. Yeah, so you know, I have to look around and maybe build something that talks to me. Because I saw you have a lot of construction oh, companies. You're even going to build. Yeah, I need to buy land. Oh. And as black people, sorry, like I am so yes, pro-black, black, everybody, okay. no please offense, forgive me, yes. but you know, I'm all about black excellence and I will yes. not apologize. Yeah. Um, we need to buy land when we can, you know. I worry about how we raise our children, that the yes. first um, description of success is buying a car. A car is a debt. Yes. The first description of success after you have graduated with your first salary should aim to buy land or buy property buy a house yes yes you can still use public transportation don't aim to buy something that will take you backwards because a car is just a debt so you you founded an organization called tunaweza mm -hmm. you're the ceo mm -hmm. it's a not-for-profit organization yes. what, what does tunaweza do so tunaweza is a non-profit organization that um, takes care of children with special needs Yes. It's a, a center that offers quite a number of therapies and alternative learning for these children so they can be able to achieve their full potential. Yes. So pretty much we work with children who have special needs and you know special needs is quite a wide range yes. of, of, of needs. Yes. It could be even normal children who have difficulty in learning, which they would call um, like learning disabilities. It could be children who have health related disabilities, yes. physical, mental, 
So we put them together and offer a service that would help them reach their full potential just within their capacities. Okay, when you say, um, when you say um, children with special needs, of course it's broad. It's very broad. And I, I suspect you can't cover everything. Yes. And you have core competencies in, in different... In different we, what, when you say special needs, what do you mean? Okay. Special needs will mean any child who would actually not have the... the not, not be able to express this language, some child who would have some physical, mental, or any other form of disability. But the way I um, would best explain it would be that children who need extra help from normal children, like for instance, children who have physical disability will require physiotherapy, which we offer. Children who have mental or uh, may I say behavioral issues, yes. those would require occupational therapy, which we also offer. We also have speech and language therapy, which is given to children who could fall on, let's say, the autism spectrum, or maybe have delayed speech or any form of delayed milestones in children. So we kind of cover most of the ranges that require therapy right. to put them in line with what, I mean, with what a normal child should be able to do. So wh wh where is Tunaweza? Where is it? Okay. Is it based in, in, is it a place or just an organization? Well, uh, Tunaweza is in Chiwatle. It's yes. in Chiwatle here in Kampala. Yeah. But again, Tunaweza, I chose the name Tunaweza just to represent the number of many people who come there because I think it's a place which offers therapy and we are, we seem to be the only ones in East Africa. We are here as the Cedric Live Show to show you what happens at the Tunaweza Children's Center. Yeah, they were first to get the buzz, but we still get the largest from Rubaga to Nami Rembe. From Kabalagala all the way to Kawempe. From Mignogno Lakes out to Wakesha Ave. KLA go all the way back, stack that paper fast. Your whole Cedric live in the capital. Live in the capital. Your whole Cedric live in the capital. Cedric live in the capital. Your whole Cedric live in the capital. Live in the capital. Exactly. So for kids who are prematurely born and kids with cerebral palsy and they are so jittery and they are stiff and we play such music. Some other thing it is somehow like stimulating the sense of touch on his skin. Um, it's been an illustrious career. So you've introduced me. My name is James Saka. Yes. Um, I hold a Master of Science in Computer Science. Okay. Um, I started my career in Bank of Uganda. Uh, in 1994. Um, worked there under a World Bank project. That's where I started my career as a systems analyst. Yes. Worked there for about three years. I'm one of those staff who have ever resigned out of Bank of Uganda for good reasons. Yes. For greener pastures. Yes. People have never understood it. Yeah, because there's some guys who are still there now and they don't want to leave. <laughs> yes. <laughs> So, I was not content with just continuing just a flat career. Yeah. Um, I went into the private sector. I joined, then there was a company, a new company called Panwald Insurance that had just been formed. And I was told about its, what it was going to do. The executive director of uh, National Information Technology Authority, AKA NITA. So, sir, uh, NITA, what is there within this ICT sector? Mm -hmm. uh, because the Ministry of ICT is quite broad, there's Communications Commission, there's uh, uh, different bodies involved. Uh, and you know, media like us at Uganda Broadcasting Corporation. What is the function of NITA? Just, just for, for, for the sake of, of the layman, you know, uh, like, like myself, mm -hmm. what is the national backbone uh, infrastructure? What is it? Um, in 2006, our president, yes. His Excellency, yes. went to China, and um, in, which was a very good thing, and very few presidents have done it. He negotiated uh, that China gives us a loan of $106 million to build a fiber optic cable. Okay. This is 2006. 2006, then we were relying um, a 
in order to bring internet in, into our country, we were relying on satellite. Cost of internet was about two thousand, three thousand dollars per megabyte per month. Three thousand dollars per megabyte. Yeah. So the president's vision at that time. Rugby cranes captain and one of the best rugby players of all time. I'm also here with Mark Mutunji, uh, a soccer player and a soccer analyst. Isn't that right? True. So now we're going to talk to Michael a little bit. So Michael, tell me, you know, rugby is <clears throat> uh, 10 years in rugby. Yeah. It's got to be some tough times. I got my jaws wired together. And from that, I could not feed. I could not eat solid food for six weeks. So like, for example, do you sleep with a teddy bear? <laughs> <laughs> so Onyango covers up the whole defense. African goalkeeper twice. Yeah. So you, you don't mm -hmm. think you'll need a defense line? You just think Onyango will be good to, to, to block all the goals? Mm, he's been suffering with injuries, but I think he'll manage. I'm eight years old, I play football, I still go to school, and I'm an analyst. You could not even look up in the sky because it was hitting you direct. So all you needed to do is just look down and look at where the ball is coming from. So why didn't you guys wear glasses and why didn't you wear gloves? Didn't you see the weather forecast? <laughs> <laughs> it, it just happened midway the games. You're watching Syria, La Liga, Premiership. When do you do this? When do you do all of this? I make my own time. I finish all my homework at school. It's basically pretty easy. Oh, okay. You know, what is... Tell me about some of the good times. Yeah, well, quite a number of memories. I think in, uh, in 2012 when we won uh, the first Elgon Cup, where I won the first Elgon Cup yes. as uh, Michael Crutch. Uh, the game was in Kenya. I think it was a very good game. Yes. Very intensely played. We played under this crazy rain. Yes. And uh, the game would go either side. But then we held our nerves and uh, managed to win that game. I think it was one of the best moments because that was the first time I said lifting a trophy for the country. Yes. Which is good. So that was a special moment. It was a special moment because we had I'd tried it for from 2-9 to 2-12. It was about... Yeah. I would say four years, mm -hmm. three years. I tried it for three years and nothing was coming through. So that year it would just brought joy to me and it was a happy moment for me. And then definitely just the recent one, the World Cup. Going to the World Cup. It was one of the best moments in my life because we were in a stadium with almost 80,000 fans. Yeah, it was big, I saw it on television. It was quite big and here you are, you showcasing your rugby on the world scene. It's something someone would dream of and then here I was living the dream of playing World Cup rugby and uh, I think it was a good moment for me so and then the Commonwealth as well where I was made the captain of the whole contingent yeah of uh, the whole Uganda including the prominent athletes of Kipsiro sorry of uh, Kiprotich and the whole works yes so I was the big general of uh, being the captain of the whole team so of the national team of the national team of Uganda which has boxing has netball so I was the overall captain of the team, so as man, a flag bearer. You've been a captain, Mark. This man has been a captain <laughs> for everything. So you know? yeah, I was I was a flag bearer of, uh, of, of of the team. Yes. And, uh, I was the one who moved for all the opening ceremony and the closing ceremony. So those are. And well, you sort of because of the industry, you sort of learn to do a, a, a bunch of other things. Yes. Um, yeah. So I do a bunch of other things, but but my metier is really directing. <coughs> directing. Yes. You know, quite recently you just directed uh, um, 27 Guns. Yes, uh, I co-directed that with uh, Natasha Karujile. Yes, how did that go? Intense. It was? Eh? It was nine months of hard work, hard labor. Yeah, I, I think I came for one part of the shoot, <laughs> yeah. uh, one day, and it, it didn't yeah. look like it was a, a walk in the park. It's not a walk Actually, in the Actually, I think park. you were in the park. You we was, were, you we were somewhere. <laughs> We were, we spent the majority of our time out in the bush because the story yes. plays out in, 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 in the bush, really, yes. which is where the, the NRA spent a lot of their time um, doing all kinds of espionage things. Yes. Yeah. Well, they, they got there eventually, right? Yes, they so did. I, I guess uh, we won't dwell too much on that. But what else have you done? I mean, you've, you've, you've done some other productions. Uh, I've been hearing your name a lot you know, uh, in, on, on, on past productions. Uh -huh. But I'm not going to speculate here, you're going to tell us. Yeah. You know. We're here with uh, Mona and uh, Sharp Sewali, we're talking film. Now before we went to break, you were telling me the difference between uh, business filmmakers and target filmmakers. That, and most of these people are actually the people that are right, that are forefronting our film industry. Okay. And 
if someone does a film, goes to this festival, that festival, that festival, and tomorrow, like Shop says, someone comes up and they're like, oh, I'm a director, a writer, a producer, and this is, now you, this, this is what you call the target filmmaker. Mm -hmm. Yes. Who are targeting specific yeah, events. Yeah, they're targeting specific events. And right. for them, it is not a business in a certain way. Yeah, for me, I personally think it should be a business much as most people do it for the passion. And, um, uh, well, some people like, 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 uh, like, let's say Sharp. I mean, all of us, I think, have been involved in film. Maybe, you, maybe I haven't been as involved as you guys have been, but I've had my own experiences. And um, you know, going back to discussions I've had, what is your? Maybe I'll start with the lady. What yes. is your opinion of the film industry in Uganda? Wow, uh, I think, I think uh, the Uganda film industry is growing at a tremendous pace. And I also think there's still a lot that we have to do or that we have not done, a lot that we have not tackled as yet. But then people are still moving forward. And um, I still think we still have a lot to learn. Never, like I wasn't, I wasn't ready for it. So it just happened and now I had a platform, now I had people expecting more videos, yes. people expecting me to live a certain way. People would see me and and like on a border and say Range Rover girl seen on border what's happening and I'm like guys I started this life on a border like the story was on a border right I just decided because that's why that's part of why I stopped actually in all honesty mm -hmm. because in 2016 it was too much people said all sorts of things they pointed out flaws I didn't even know I had in my body and so I was just like no but then I realized like these people are their lives go on I mean, he'll, he'll abuse you, senseless. Then wait for the next person. And then just move on with his life and have a good time. Well, for me, I'm sad. So yes. I realize I'm not going to let this affect me anymore. I mean, yes, I have, I started to embrace, actually social media has helped me find out my issues with my body. And so I'm like, okay, this is how I am. Mm -hmm. So what's next? Let's move on. So even when they say it, it doesn't offend me because I've, I've already embraced it. Whatever you feel, sense? whatever they're saying, you've sort of said, okay, that's what it is, that's, that's what, what it is. is. So I'm not going to offend me anymore. If they yeah. say, what? Recently, someone said, uh, <coughs> my legs are the next big thing after the ginger bridge. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not, no, listen, I'm not, I mean, no, no, I can't be laughing now. It, no, 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 it's no. okay. I Did embraced you laugh? it. I, no, at that point, I was like, ah, Lord, but this is creative. Did you laugh? <laughs> I did, because my legs are big, yeah? So I embraced that already, so it doesn't I'm not going to say anything. Anymore. I mean, you're you asking me a question, but I'm not going to answer that. Because <laughs> I'm not supposed to be looking at your legs anyway. So yeah, I'm looking uh, at you direct, eye to eye, yeah, you know? Yeah, I, I love them. So yeah, I, I, I just let those things. Um, it's, it's, it's about mentoring boys, but um, in broad, it's about, to, it's about um, raising the flag for the boy child. Yes. And even the men, not just the boys because men are boys before they become men. So it's about raising that flag. Why Some don't even change. Some exactly. Just uh, why, 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 why is the boy child? And it's, it's not about to take away the girls. But my point is that how can we empower the girl child without pushing away the boy child, without pushing away the brother to go back and sit back? Because you found societies or organizations that are coming up to say, Oh, the girl child is vulnerable, or oh, the girl child is what? And the girl, and they are right. But what about the boy child? Who makes this girl child vulnerable? Is it the trees? Is it the buildings? Of course, it's the boy child. So, if you are helping the girl child, if you are helping mother, how can you help mother without pushing away her brother into the corner? Coach Liverpool after Ben Tays. After Ben Tays. Yeah. Them call me a pass. And I'm on the Cedric Life Show. Yeah. Featuring Cass Baby and Horace. Hey, pass, lyrical, Jack Norris. You have to know this and notice. Yeah, keep watching UBC, Cedric Life Show.
that for sure that you know if you know you know Market. Pull out a target list and hit every target Yeah, they were first to get the buzz, but we still get the largest From Rubaga to Nami Rembe From Kabbalah Gala all the way to Kowempe From Mignogno Lakes out to Wakesha Ave KLA go all the way and back, stack that paper fast